Muted. I am your host, Rob Mann. With me today, I have a guest star. You might recognize him from the good ship Staffing Future, Captain Jack Copeland. How you doing, Jack? Very good. Very pleased to be on the show. Uh, the reason why I have Jack on, so Jack, Staffing Future is a... Well, Jack, why don't you tell very quickly what Staffing Future does, and then we'll go. <laughs> we, we build tech-enabled staffing websites. So websites that look good and drive traffic, but are technology-enabled and integrated to attract and convert and nurture candidates. Yep. And so we're going to talk about what your staffing website should do for you, with the end result being it should work for you 24-7 as your number one recruiter and salesperson. And the reason why we're having this conversation was because I am part of the group called Tech Hub South Florida, which is the, the CEO is Nikki Caboose, who was a former customer of mine when I was at Bullhorn and Earfish, now Bullhorn Automation. And Nikki runs this great group out of South Florida to promote technology and all the technology players that are moving down here. It existed before Mayor Suarez went on his incredible rampage of attracting talent and tech to Miami and South Florida. Miami is not the only part of South Florida, by the way. There's also Broward County, which is Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach, which is West Palm, Boca, and a few other really great cities, but unrelated to this point. So they have a website at Tech Hub. And the other day we were on a call for all the volunteers and ambassadors. And Nikki was like, hey guys, I don't know if I told you this, but we're doing a website project. Mostly because I want a website that works for me and that I don't have to work for. It causes me nothing but headache because I have to email people at all hours of night to answer questions about events because we have a lot of events. We have a lot of things going on. And so it, it struck me that, you know, Every time I talk to Jack, which Jack is a frequent guest on my shows, mostly because I just personally want to call him Captain Jack in public as much as possible. There's, aside from the fact that he's really talented and smart, but it's, uh, it, it really it got me thinking about that 24 seven recruiter that your website should be. And so we're going to try and tie all that together for you. Like how, what do you need to have to make sure that your website works for you 24 seven? And we're going to do it in the context of something that Born recently released, which is the connected recruiting idea, which is. You know, you have things of attract, engage, convert, and nurture. And how do we tie all those together? So, so Jack, now that's the point where you get to talk. I was just rambling. For a while. Yeah, tell me more about South Florida, Rob. <laughs> that was a good, it was a very pointed ramble. I got to the point quickly with some side notes. So, Jack, the first thing we wanted to talk about, these five things that your website will do for you. And number one is brand identity. So, you know, wrap that around, you know, let people understand why that's important for your website to do that for you. So, so at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is, is attract candidates, right? Nurture them, convert them and get them to buy into your business. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. It could be people that you've worked with before, getting them to answer a phone call. It could be getting someone to come in and apply to a job. But behind it, the whole basis of them trying to engage with you, there's got to be a message about why they should talk to you, who you are, what you do, and essentially why I'm here. And so, you know, uh, we're not full service marketing company. I do not profess to be a, a full branding expert. We don't do branding. You know, we build websites, people involving their existing brand and things like that. But you need to understand exactly what the purpose of your organization is. You need to be able to communicate that clearly and effectively on your website and on your social platforms and on your email marketing. You need to be able to get that in front of people so they understand what is the purpose of them engaging your business, why they should return your phone call, why they should read your content, why they should click that link. And that is something that is the very first step of trying to build any kind of strategic marketing presence with prospective talent, right the way down even to your own people understanding what your message is and who you are so they can communicate effectively when they're on the phone with these candidates. And I think personal branding is a key thing as part of the brand identity for your, at least your leaders to be visible, right? So Jack is doing that right now. He's on a show that we're going to push out into the interwebs. And so he's talking about what he's, what his niche is, which is technology and, and technology enabled websites, right? So if you are a leader of a company and you don't have a personal brand, you don't have to, but find somebody who likes to talk on camera and see if you can get them to do some stuff for you. Cause I think it helps tremendously. And yeah, companies where they've got a great brand in terms of your giant organizations that are out there. But when we're talking about the vast majority of our industry, right, the small and medium companies, even if you've got 200 recruiters, you're going to have people within that that are fantastic at promoting themselves and developing themselves. But if you've got a good brand that enables them to promote themselves whilst also promoting your organization, you can tie those things together. And suddenly it becomes not just about Rob, but it's Rob from Kylo or it's Jack from Staff and Future. And you've got these brand ambassadors 
that are representing your organization whilst also representing themselves. You know, a lot of recruiters would, would just sell themselves. And that's fantastic, right? If you can build a relationship with someone, they've got an amazing, great recruiter score or whatever, they know the entire market, that's fantastic. Other businesses will go and sell the business. But if you can combine those two yeah. well together, so I arrive on a website, try to get back to where we were, I understand exactly what this organization does. But I've also got faces and individuals in this organization that I feel like I can associate with. And those faces, you know, have got their own stories to tell, their own podcasts, their own videos, their own jobs, their own reviews. I'm going to engage with that in a much more personal fashion, particularly for niche or boutique shops. I think that's a really, really strong part of your of your individual brand. And frankly, how you differentiate from the, you know, the billion dollar staffing organizations that are out there. Yep. And I think I'm going to go check Staffing Future's website. Staffing Future is yep. like possessive. Did, did website i get in trouble because i call it staffing futures a lot and it's not there's no s at the end so i'm gonna go check the website and see if all the content that you and i've created and if any of it's on your blog post which i'm probably pretty sure it's not so this one's gonna be there jack i'm gonna talk to somebody well, we've actually just released a new website uh, i haven't announced to anyone because we've oh now we, we gotta we gotta hot off the exclusive. press release that's amazing all right Kylo Unmuted Official Release. <laughs> that exactly. feature has a new website, but there is no content that Jack and I have created together on that website. So this, this could be the first. Yes, content, there right? we it's go. Stage, it's a stage release. We've got 150 <laughs> more pieces of portfolio to get out. Well, what part of that 150 is personal branding for Jack Copeland, CEO <laughs> yeah. of Staffing Manager? <laughs> anyway, all right. Number two, Jack, it has to validate and, and be valid and also add value to your brand. Yeah, absolutely. What well, I value to your candidates. So, you know, it, it comes down to that kind of like, why am I here? And so I always tie it back to sort of e-commerce. You know, if you think about from a candidate's point of view, if they are just looking for a job, the easiest place for them to go uh, is to a job board, right? If I'm a candidate, why would I sit on your website and search for your much smaller volume of jobs with, with, with the same algorithm or, or a similar level of sophistication and just apply for jobs on your board? when I could go through and I could, I can look at billions, right? And so it, the reason that I'm gonna go and be there is because I'm gonna understand, okay, I am in a relevant area that is specific to me and what I do. I'm working with a business that understands me. I'm looking at jobs that are relevant to my market, obviously, but also this is a place that I can learn. I can learn what I'm worth. I can learn if I'm being underpaid or overpaid. I can hear about what's going on in my industry. I can hear very specifically about how, if I want to go and attain a job proactively with a passive candidate i've got tools and tips and tips that are going to help me develop that i can understand the caliber of recruiters you've got i can understand the caliber of the clients that you work with so there just needs to be a much more overwhelming and sophisticated message and, and if you do it right in that environment you're going to get much better conversion and you're going to get conversion from people that are harder to attract which is normally the kind of candidates that your that your clients want so you know it, it, it's a huge huge part of it is focusing on that candidate experience within your site and thinking about it from how can I add value to them? So I think from connected recruiting, right? The, you know, your brand identity will help attract, and then you're also adding value will attract and also engage them uh, with knowing that their jobs are correct on your, like that they're relevant jobs to what they want to do, that there's relevant information to what stage of their, like if you call it, if, you, if we bring it to the funnel conversation, like what part of the funnel they're in, even if they're like hovering over the top of being passive, right. if there's good content on there, it will engage them so that they're thinking of you. If, you know, and, and we're recording this where there's lots of layoffs going on. So, you know, there might be people That's who target. So it, yeah. it, it, it's time on site, right? It's why that time on site metric is, is so important. You know, it, you would think it would be a conflict. If what I want them to do is come in and buy as quickly as possible, Ideally, I, or, or I would like as little time on site as possible, arrive, apply to a job. But, you know, that time on site metric where if the time on site goes up and the bounce ratio goes down, you've got really, really strong evidence that the people that you are attracting are engaging with your brand. And so, you know, what we don't want is just keep buying candidates again and again and again to be reaching out to candidates that are not committed to returning our phone calls and not excited about those jobs. We've applied to 50 different jobs. So, you know, the attract game is maybe it's buying clicks, maybe it's sending someone a link on LinkedIn, maybe it's leaving someone a message, but the engage game is when they actually go to that platform, they consider that job, they listen to that message, they read that email, they click that link, starting to understand the value of your business, the value that you can offer to them. And the more likely, uh, the more time they spend on site, the more likely they are to convert, the more time they return to the site, the more likely they are to convert. Basically every single metric indicates that the more engaged they are, 
the more likely you are to make money. And you can borderline prove it right the way down to people even accepting offers, right? At the end of the day, you know, there's no point in getting people jobs that they fundamentally don't want and will end up turning down or even leaving fairly quickly. Yeah, makes sense. All right, number three, make it easy to do whatever that person, whether it's a sales contact or a candidate, came to your site to do. Yeah. 100%. I like to use examples from, from other industries just to tie it all back together. Last night, I, I'm over in the UK right now, sort of semi on vacation, semi working at UK clients, juggling lots of different time zones. And about 10.45 PM, I had this thought of, I kind of want a kebab. I can't get a good kebab in California. And then I had this other thought where I was like, do you really be in the kebab at 11 PM? Kebab, like a gyro? Yeah, it is, but it's something like drunk people. So good. But I'd been working and I, I, I was, you know, I hadn't even had a beer or anything. Did you have a kebab? I needed a kebab and I was like, oh, should I, should I not? And I went on delivery, which is the equivalent of Postmates or Grubhub or whatever out here in the UK. And they made it so easy for me to order this kebab. It's like I launched it just to consider it and immediately it was there. Eat the best kebab. We can get you there in 11 minutes. It already knew the last kebab that I'd ordered. And then I could buy it with Apple Pay, right? Bear in mind, I don't even live in this country. It took me about 30 seconds, not even, probably 15 seconds to get the kebab I wanted and order it. And then 15 minutes later, it was on my door. That's an incredible customer experience for a website or for an app. I put it up. Yeah, it's incredible. And, and honestly, I wouldn't have bought it. I was, I was so on the fence. But the point is that it is so relevant in your website experience, right? If I'm on a mobile device, I'm in a hurry. I see a job ad. I'm loosely interested but you don't make it easy for me to apply, I'm not going to apply. If you don't make it easy for me to come back to the site so that I can reconsider that, I'm not going to come back to the site. If you buy a click on Indeed and you click that link and I land on a website, then all you've got to ask me is that job and I don't want that job, I'm not going to stick around. And so, you know, really making it easy for people to do what you want them to do is very, very important. And we, we've talked a lot in the industry now with, nurturing and engagement and all that kind of stuff but that's what the top of the funnel piece is it's like yes getting people to apply to jobs but also making it easy for them to submit a resume or save a job or create a job alert or say actually i just want to download this piece of content and i'm willing to give you my email address so you can bring me back and so you know that that holds the concept of lead conversion we think of it as always being the end state the end state of being a candidate that applied to a job but it can be top of the funnel lead conversion as well. Like in the delivery example, it could be someone installing an app, looking at the kebab house. And then the next time you go and they launch that app, you, you advertise what they want to see and then more likely to convert. And it's exactly the same with everything that we do. If we've got the right technology in place, we've got the right information in place, we'll make it easy for them to apply. If not, we'll make it easy for them to say, well, I'm, maybe I don't want this job, but I might want a slightly different one. Or maybe I'll come back tomorrow when I've got more time and maybe I'll be in a different frame of mind to do it at that point. And so, you know, always think about that candidate experience and just making it as easy as possible to do whatever you want the candidate to do. That's fantastic. I'll give you my personal example from yesterday too. So my wife and I are doing a whole 30, which means we can't have any processed sugar, which makes it really hard to order food anywhere. But I opened Uber Eats and Uber Eats was like, oh, hey, you're a regular at this ramen house that's near my house. And it showed up and they're like, oh, you know, you're, you're a loyal customer of this place. And I'm like, it's, it's around six o'clock PM. I usually order Robin around this time. And the first thing that this thing shows me is the place I order the most from. I'm like, well done. Uber Eats. And I had to think about that until you just said that at the kebab. So no, uh, totally. and, and, and a lot of it, people always say, oh, the phones are listening to us. And I know there is some evidence. Like we're giving yeah. the phone enough information that I'd have to listen, but they are listening. Exactly. They are, but they, they are listening, are listening but they get enough they info without it. Yeah. They still, they still half the time they're saying, you know, it's, it's the algorithm is picking up just based on previous behavior and, and, and what you're interested in and what people associated you were interested in. So, so clearly if you, if you see me, feed me ramen. Otherwise, spicy ramen. <laughs> All right. Number four. Is converting. So, so fundamentally, you know, what are we trying to do? We're trying to convert those leads. So we talked a little bit about it, making it easy for the user to do what you want them to do, but eventually they need to go somewhere. So, you know, whether we are pushing that data into the APS, whether we're sending it through to the recruiter, whether we're doing some sort of mixture with above, whether we're putting them into Daxter, whether we're getting them in a chat box sequence. We're making it easy for them to begin the process, but fundamentally reporting the entire metric needs to be based around the ultimate goal of converting that lead. And so 
But yeah, it's great if they subscribe to your blog. It's great if they begin an application and they abandon and you've got the right text to bring them back. It's great if they accept cookies and they click around a bit and you can go and follow them around the internet and sort of ping them. But fundamentally, every single metric is focused, like every single KPI is focused on making money. Every single metric on the website is, is focused around getting that conversion. So you've got things like Hotjar that's analyzing the user behavior on the pages. You know, where are they scrolling? Where are they going? What are they clicking? You've got to run analysis on your content and the quality of your job descriptions. You need to be looking at the stats around conversion from all of your different sources and just continuously optimizing. And so, you know, the, the aha moment for me with, with everything that we're doing is that when I've been in technology for 18 years, right? And I'd, I've been in some technology for 18 years, but I hadn't had that much to do with websites. I'd even worked for Broadbean, Job Distribution, and Bullhorn Partnership, and Peerfish, and then Career Builder. But I hadn't really spent a lot of time digging into individual websites. And I started looking at the metrics of some of these clients' websites, and, and they're converting 10% of traffic. And everyone's going, well, that's amazing. Like, this is so good. We're getting 1,000 visitors, and we're converting 100 leads. And frankly, it is, right? I know the industry, it's hard to do, but you're then sat there going, well, wow, 90% of people aren't converting. And actually on many websites, anyway, 9.9% 9 .9 of people are converting. And so if you can incrementally move that conversion, think about if you're spending 10 grand a month on Indeed and you can double your conversion, you've got two options in that scenario, right? You can literally halve your spend or double your candidate flow all by focusing on conversion. And so... Same with SEO, same with whatever kind of traffic you've got. The more methodologies you put in to convert, the more different types of leads you acknowledge, not just do you want this job right now, but you know, would you like to build a resume? Would you like to go through a chatbot sequence that results in a book meeting where our recruiters are willing to talk to you because you've answered four questions, we know that you're in our target market. Would you like to subscribe to some information? Would you like to fill in a survey where you can get the results from it? You know, exit intent banners where it's just popping up and going, you didn't apply for a job, Give us your email address and put you on some job alerts. There's just so many different ways that you can convert people into that lead process and then incrementally move it forward to get value from the, from the traffic you've got. And then, of course, if they're going through the lead right then, you've got a lead. And if they're at the top of the funnel, when they return, they're way more likely to end up converting as a lead and they're way more engaged and way more familiar with your brand. So if you guys got anything out of this, rewind like the last 30 seconds. And make sure your website can do all of the things that Jack just listed. Every single one. All of them. I mean, there were that many. There were like six. But seriously, that's not that hard. Yeah. Like, it should just be your jobs. And like, a, you know, it would be lucky. We'd be, I think we'd be lucky if it was a, a jobs and a picture of all the recruiters. Like, I'd be, I'd be like, that's okay. At least there's humans on your yep. human, yep. on your human business. Well, no, I mean, it depends. Just real quick, not to segue off, but we're going to have a lot of different, you know, different people, different environments. If you're doing travel there, I think you might want to focus a lot more on engaging and selling your recruiters, right? And the relationships, because it's such a relationship driven business. And there's a lot more complexity to that whole process of getting on a plane and going to work somewhere for assignment and you're more like a talent agent, right? Whereas if you're in the light industrial side, it might be all about efficiency, right? It might be about, hey, look, I just, I need to get paid. I need to get paid quickly and you need to sell this concept to me and you need to get me through this process and make it easy. Don't go after me for my social security numbers. I apply for a job and also build some trust with me. Give me a feeling that if I go through all these hoops and I go on this two week thing where I'm going to go and work at a festival that you're going to redeploy me afterwards and I'm going to have an ongoing relationship. So it's going to vary depending on the type of staffing that the company's doing and the way that the candidates are going to fill. Yeah, makes sense. All right. And the fifth and final one, the system, meaning your website, needs to follow up or set follow-ups for your team, for those people who are your leads so that either you can redeploy them or you can place them or you can just follow up with people who maybe weren't ready, but maybe ready soon. Yeah, absolutely. So not part of the wider conversion conversation, but also part of the post-conversion nurturing. So, you know, when people talk about nurturing, a lot of times they're talking about nurturing what's in the ATF. You also got to nurture the stuff that's not in the ATF yet, which is that top of the funnel piece. But in either scenario, you need to make sure that you have the email, the text, the right software, whether it's HubSpot, MailChimp, SenseHQ, whether you're using, you know, a bullhorn automation formerly known as HearFish, whatever it is that you've got in place or even onboarding software, right? If we're gonna ask someone to go for a 10 minute onboarding process and we're gonna ask them to do that early in a journey, sometimes without even having spoken to someone, 
and they get halfway through it, we're going to need something in place that's nudging them, reminding them to do it, right? You know, I just went and I'm renting a hotel room. I've just booked some flights using a different software program and they're chasing me like crazy to get me to, you know, put in my passport information so they can check me into my flight and give me my code scan to get my boarding pass and make sure that I've got the app on the phone for everything that I need. They're making it as easy as possible for me to complete that booking and then become a retained customer and have a really, really positive experience because they know that if I do that and I'm not stood there outside my hotel room or at the airport in a fluster trying to figure out what's going on, but it's just easy and it was simple, I'll do it again. And that's exactly what, you know, you need to have within your staffing website. And that doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to have a full here pitch or a sense HQ built within your website, but you're going to need to have a slick integration with your ATS. You need to make sure the right data is being passed through to the ATS and passed back so that, you know, something like Bullhorn Automation can market the right jobs to the right people or can market the right content to the right people or can ask them to complete a survey. And when they're clicking that link, it's going through to the right part of your website. It's engaged with all the other functionality on your website and the reporting circle is closed because otherwise everything is an independent candidate experience. It's not holistic and you're going to wind up in chaos, even to the point that, you know, realistically with our job alerts, for example, we're, we're working on a, a sort of deeper integration with Bullhorn Automation where we're trying to understand who they're alerting and who we're alerting just so that you don't wind up in a scenario where you've got, you know, three different pieces of software pinging the candidate with different messages, you know, it's a poor experience. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Well, that, uh, that about wraps it up. So guys, quick recap for you guys on what they are. So again, connected recruiting, the idea of attracting, engaging, converting, nurturing, and then... Things, five things your website should do with you. Jack, do you remember them or do you want me to read them? No, you read them all. That's good. Good answer. Because if you got them. Brand identity. Yeah. Validate and add value to the candidates or sales contacts. Make it easy to do what you want to do on the site. Help with that conversion. Then convert. Make that easy, efficient. Get it to the right places. Make it so that you can automate, which would eventually get to nurture. And also report. Because guess what? Good data in the system allows you to do both. And then finally, let the system follow up for you or set follow-ups for you so that you can do that nurturing, that converting, and then that reattracting, which is cheaper than net new attraction, AKA spending money on job boards that you don't need to do. So love it. Well, Jack, it is always fantastic. I think you got demoted during this episode of Kylo Unmuted to Chef Jack. I could be a captain and a chef, man. Yeah, I'm just, maybe I'm like a... Uh, uh, one person minutes of super yacht, you know. Look right? at this guy. Trying to have, have a boat in the day. He's trying to wear many hats, a captain's hat and a chef's hat. <laughs> well, anyway, stay tuned. We might have to do a staffing food cheer, <laughs> which would be the combination of staffing, adventure, and food. And there we go. Well, anyway, good to see you as always. Have a safe trip back to the States and, and go enjoy your kebabs, sir. Thanks, man.